Figma variables are extremely powerful in creating consistency within a project or design system. There's no way that you can become an expert after watching just a five minute video. But today I wanna to give you a crash course so that you can start using variables to significantly uplevel your workflow. First, what are variables? Variables in Figma store reusable values that can be applied to all kinds of design properties and prototyping actions. For example, you might have a button design with a specific color and text style. Instead of manually adjusting each of these properties every time you create a new button, you can use variables to store these values and update them consistently across your file. But you might be thinking, why would you use variables instead of styles? What's the difference? While styles are also great for maintaining consistency across designs, variables offer an extra layer of flexibility and organization. Styles work well for things like typography, colors, and components, but variables actually allow you to create dynamic relationships between elements. And you can use variables to manage things like spacing, layout, out, alignment, proportions, and even animations. And you can take color to a whole new level using variables too, being able to switch between modes like dark mode and light mode. When used well, variables allow you to create really robust design systems with consistent naming conventions that allow everyone working on the project to be aligned. Now let's look at an example of how to create and apply variables to a Figma project. For this video, we're gonna stick with color as our variable. So how do you create a variable in the first place? So you can see here in this line, we have local variables. So I'm going to click on that and there's a couple way we can create variables. One is here, create variable. So we're gonna create a color variable. We'll name this color orange and we'll grab this orange color that I've been using in this design. Another way that we can create a variable is by selecting on a frame or any element and defining it that way. So I'm going to select on this whole frame and go into selection colors. Here we have this dark gray. I'm gonna click on style plus variable and we'll do gray, create variable. So that's another way that we can do that. And now that's kind of a shortcut because now all of the gray elements in this page are now tagged as gray from our variable collection. So let's do that with the beige as well. Perfect. Now, since we haven't yet tagged orange, we can go into style and just choose orange. So now all of the colors used in this frame are tagged as one of the variables in our first collection. So I say first collection because this is just the first layer. So let's name this collection primitives. What that means is this is the lowest layer of variables. And now we're going to create a second collection that is actually going to reference these values from the first collection. So I'll show you what I mean. Let's go up here and choose create collection. We'll call this one tokens because this whole process of referencing other variables is called tokenization. It's actually something that's used really commonly in software, which is what makes this a really good way to create consistent design systems that can be used by engineers, designers, and everyone that you're working with. Okay, let's create our first variable inside our tokens collection. We're going to name it color. And now we're going to be using more semantic names that actually hint towards what this color should be used for. So we'll name this button. And then we're going to reference this orange color in our primitives collection. Let's create another one. Color, link. And same thing, we're going to go into libraries and tag the orange value from our primitive collection. I'm gonna go through and create a few more. Okay, so now you can see I have most all of the elements on this page defined into what primitive color it should be using. Now I just have to actually link these up. So for example, if I click on this logo here, it is using the color orange but instead I actually want it to be using one of our tokens. So I'm going to go 
into tokens and click on logo since this is our logo. Same thing with this. I'm going to click here and we want to change this to something in our more semantic and we want to change this to heading. We'll change this to body, this to button, this to text button, and so on. Let me show you why this is so powerful. Let's say we want to change the color of this button, but we don't want it to affect the color of this link. If we were just using styles, we would have to create a whole new style, and that would break a lot of the styles that are linked across our website design. But because we're using variables, we can really easily make this switch. So inside our token collection, I'm going to go into button and change this to the gray that we're using. See how this didn't affect the link or the logo because it's its own token. Another cool thing I'll point out is that you can actually use this to create light mode and dark mode or any other modes you might need. You can do this by pressing the plus button here to create a new variable mode. It will automatically copy over all of the same values from your first mode. So let's call this one light mode and this one dark mode. Then I can go in and choose different colors for dark mode. Then you can select the frame since it has variables with different modes applied to it. And across from layer here, click on this icon to change modes where we can toggle from light to dark. Variables are hugely powerful. So I've just barely scratched the surface with everything that you can do with them. We focused on colors here, but you can also tokenize things like text, spacing, proportions, corner radius, animations, and more. I really encourage you to start taking advantage of variables in Figma, and hopefully this gave you a good introduction.